Hi, Year 3. This is your Friday comprehension session. I hope you've had a good week um, and I hope hopefully you are able to have a look at the resource before I read it to you. So if you're able, if you've got a paper copy of it now, fantastic. Um, if you don't, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and you can have a look at it. Today's text is on coasts. Yesterday's one was on mountains and volcanoes. Today's one's on coasts. So if you can, if you have the text in front of you, brilliant. Have a read of it now. Um, if not, I'm going to share my screen with you so that you're able to see it on here. So it, it's quite small, so I'll zoom in for you if, I, if you need it to be zoomed in, that's not a problem. If you're able to pause the video now, just have a look at this and read through those paragraphs first. I will read it for you as well. So if you pause the video now. Okay, I'm gonna read through it. If there's any words that are a bit tricky, I will try to, to give you a definition of what those words mean. Um, and if there's any that you're not sure of, if, if you ask an adult, then that'll be fantastic just to help you in understanding what you're doing. So our, our text today is called Coasts and it's written by Ruth Thompson. And a bit like we had before when we had our verses last week, the, some of the lines are numbered for you, which just helps you if one of the questions says, look at line five, rather than having to count from the beginning, you know that that line is line four, you can just look at the next one down. So they're numbered at the side for you and they're written in paragraphs. So if you remember last time when we had a poem, it was written in verses, which is what the poem paragraphs were called when it looked at a song or a poem. These are called paragraphs. And we've also got our subheadings, which we have focused on before when we looked at non-chronological reports and our mountain text yesterday also had those uh, subheadings. So that's just to help us understand what the each what is in each paragraph. For example, we know this paragraph will be about rock cliffs. That's just there to help you. And it's written in bold, so it stands out. Sometimes when we write our subheadings, we write it uh, underlined just to help us there as well. So I'm going to read through the text. Today's going to be a bit more independent. So I'll read the text. I'm going to read the questions and try and give you a few little hints. But then I'm going to ask you to try and do it independently um, and then upload onto Tapestry and we'll have a look at it for you. So our text today, coasts. A coast is a place where the sea meets the land. In some places, the coast is a sloping beach. In other places, the land ends with high walls of rock. These are called cliffs. Rock cliffs. Wind, rain and waves change the shape of the coast all the time. Crashing waves slowly make the bottom of rocky cliffs crumble. Waves wear away soft rock, making holes. These become caves or arches. Sand and dunes. Over millions of years, waves wear soft rocks into tiny grains of sand. Some sandy beaches are made of crushed seashells. Some coasts are always windy. The wind dries the sand and blows it behind the beach. The sand piles up into the soft hills called dunes. Marron grass is planted on sand dunes. Its long roots hold the sand in place. Seabirds and animals. Many seabirds nest and rest together on the ledges of rocky cliffs. Here, they and their eggs are safe from hungry rats, snakes and larger birds. Seals and turtles are often born on beaches. They swim out to sea soon after they are born. Seals come back on land to rest. They lie in groups on rocks and sandbanks, harbours and ports. Before there were aeroplanes, people travelled across sea by ship. They landed at harbours in deep sheltered bays where their ships were safe from rough waves. Today, ships mainly carry heavy goods. These travel in metal containers. The containers are loaded and unloaded at big ports. Protecting coasts. Some people use the sea as a dustbin. This is dangerous for sea life. The waste often washes up onto the shore. Most waste is plastic. It can float for thousands of miles before reaching land. People must look after coasts so that these are not spoiled forever. So that's the text. There's a few words there that could be a bit tricky. Uh, we've got ports, which is just where they uh, unload and load the big containers that they've brought in on the ships. Um, and it's just the area of land where they, they transport it from the ship um, onto the land. Um, we've got dunes, which is just the soft hills where the sand piles up and marron grass is just the type of grass that they have on those dunes as well. Um, tricky question. There's a word that's in, uh, I thought it, saw it twice. Where was it? Oh, here. So quite line 10, it says, over millions of years, waves wear soft rocks. Now we've discussed this before. I'm wondering if anyone can remember what type of word that is, where it's called, it says wear, 
like wear soft rocks but it's not the same type as wear as in I wear a jumper can you remember what that word is called when it looks the same it sounds the same but it's got a different meaning so I wear a jumper and the waves wear soft rocks have a think about what it is it's quite tricky remember it's not like when we had two as in I go to the beach, too, as in it was too windy and the number two, that's a different type of word. There's two words and we discussed them in one of our lessons before when you were back in school. It's quite a difficult one. See if you can write that down as one of your, in the top of your comprehension, if you write that down, that'd be fantastic if you can remember what that's called. It begins with an H. Have a think, see if you can work it out. OK, let's have a look at the questions. Now I'm going to zoom out for you so that you can see all the questions and you can pause the screen now to have a look at them. So there's nine questions there. So if you pause the screen now, then you can work through them. And I'm going to read the questions for you. And I'll try to give you a few little hints and I'm going to ask you to try and work through them by yourself. So I'm going to zoom in just to go through the questions for you. Suggest a heading for the first paragraph of text. So that was just like yesterday when the first paragraph in our um, text about mountains didn't have a subheading. And I went through some ideas of what it could be about. So the first question is asking you to write a heading for your first paragraph of text. Question two, write the meaning this text gives for the word coast. So we're looking at what the word coast means. If I go to the top of it, this is the paragraph you need to come up with your subheading for. And it tells you what a coast is right at the beginning. So use that to help you with question two. Question three, draw a simple diagram of a sand dune using information from the text. Label the sand dune and the marron grass. Now this is trickier than yesterday because yesterday you had the picture to help you that they already gave you. They haven't given that to you this time. So you've got to read the description really carefully. It's also worth two marks. So a bit like yesterday, you'll get a mark for your picture and a mark for labelling the sand dune and the marron grass. So you're looking in your text for those words, sand dune and marron grass. Question four, do you think wind or waves would be more likely to change the shape of the coast? So which one, wind or waves? And explain why. You can have a look in that section in our text. So it says about wind here. Have a think about which one it could be. Have a read of the text just to help you with it as well, because here it says about waves wearing away soft rock. And here it says about um, the wind dries the sand. This one's talking about the waves crashing it and the wind and the rain and the waves change the shape of the coast. So think about read those two paragraphs, to try and work out your answer to explain why you think wind or waves would more likely change the shape of the coast. Question five, waves wear soft rocks into tiny grains of sand. What does wear suggest about this process? Tick one. So you've got to tick one of these boxes about what you think wear means in that sentence. Does it mean the rocks wear water like clothes? A bit like what I said earlier on, where Miss Lewis wears a jumper. Does it mean waves slowly grind the rock? Does it mean waves smash the rock or the rocks wear sand like clothes? I think there's two that are little simple ones, but there's two other ones there that could be either the waves smash the rock or the waves slowly grind the rock. Think about it carefully. Does it happen suddenly or happen slowly? Be careful with that one. Complete this list of events explaining how a beach is formed using information from the text. The wind dries the sand and blows it behind the beach. The sand piles up into soft hills called dunes. Marum grass is planted on sand dunes. Its long roots hold the sand in place. So it says complete the list of events explaining how a beach is formed using information from the text. You need to find the paragraph that explains how the beach is formed. Question seven. Which reason is given in the text for the fact that ships today mainly carry heavy goods rather than people? This one is a bit tricky because it doesn't tell you in a lot of detail. It tells you why 
they uh, why ships were used more often for certain things in the olden days compared to now. So that's your little your clue. That's quite a tricky one, that one. So the reason given in the text explains why ships today carry goods, so they might carry things from different countries that we might need in this country, rather than having big ships that carry people. We still have big ships that carry people, like cruise ships, but why nowadays do we not have as many of those? Question eight. Some people use the sea as a dustbin, and it's telling you to look at paragraph nine for that, so count each section carefully. And remember, I'm going to go up to the top to show you, this here, this is one paragraph and that's another because we've got a little space in between. So just be careful, just because it's under the same subheading, it may not be the same paragraph, so be careful with that one. So paragraph nine, why do you think the writer used the word dustbin? Tick one, because the sea is full of rubbish to show that some people don't think about what they throw away and the harm it causes, the harm it does to show you that the sea is really a dustbin, or to show that it is okay to throw rubbish into the sea. You tick one for that one. And question nine, which part of the text tells you about where people decided to build harbours? So you need to write down the name of your subheading for the paragraph that tells you that information. Some of these questions are really similar to yesterday's ones. So if you're not sure how to find the information, we are not sure how to answer it. You can always watch yesterday's information to help you. Work through it really carefully. All the answers are there. And normally, not always, but normally the, quest, the answers are in order. So, for example, question one and two may be up here, but question nine, the answer could be further down. Not always, but some often they, have, they work through the text when they give you the questions just to help. That's a little clue for you. Okay, good luck. Some of the questions are quite difficult, just try your best. And if you upload it onto Tapestry, then you'll be able to mark it. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.